This video describes new plots added to Stack Graphics 19. They're called waterfall plots. Stack Graphics 19 offers three different types of waterfall plots. Ordered waterfall plots, sequential waterfall plots, and three-dimensional waterfall plots. I'll give you an example of each in this video. The first data set I'm going to look at contains information on 54 patients that were given a particular drug. I'm interested in examining the change column, which is the percent change in the size of the tumor that each of those had when they were given the drug. They're also divided into various categories according to their status at the time the drug was administered. To plot this data, I'll go to the top menu to plot waterfall plots ordered. The data to be plotted are in the column called change. Labels for each of the bars in the plot are in the column patient. And I'll use category as a code to color the bars. In an ordered waterfall plot, I have a couple options. First, I can order the values in either decreasing or increasing order. Secondly, I can plot the bars in a vertical direction or a horizontal direction. I need to specify the baseline from which the bars will be drawn. And if I like, I can add an additional reference line at some location of the plot. Here you'll see the waterfall plot that was created. I'll fix the text a little bit perhaps reduce it in size so you can see the patient labels a little bit better. And here you can see a basic waterfall plot. Each of the changes in tumor size has been sorted from positive to negative. The target was to see a reduction of at least 30 percent which is where the reference line was drawn. You can also see through the coloring of the bars that there are some differences depending upon the status of the patient when the drug was administered. The second data set we're going to plot has information about a fictional bookstore. In particular it characterizes the income of that store and you can see under the item column that it begins with gross revenue. You then make revenue adjustments and subtract that from gross revenue gives net revenue. Subtract inventory, merchandising, other sales costs and you get gross income. Take away the costs of staff, marketing, facilities and insurance and you're left with the operating income which after you take away the taxes is the net income. In addition to a column describing the item and a column describing the amount, there's a third column labeled total. It has a zero if the item is not a total or subtotal or a one if it is. To plot this data, I'll go to the top menu and select Plot, Waterfall Plots, Sequential. The data to be plotted are the amounts. Item contains the labels and total contains the total subtotal indicators. The analysis options dialog box lets me specify whether I want vertical or horizontal bars. Gap width is the size of the gap that separates the different bars. I can also ask it to connect the bars, draw the legends, and I'll select both and press OK. Here you see the waterfall plot. I think I'll move the labels around a little bit and perhaps reduce their size so they fit better on my screen. Here you can see that gross revenue in increase has been colored green, an increase in the amount. 
decreases in the amounts are shown in red and any column that's a subtotal is shown in gray. In this case there's only one increase and several decreases. There could be more than one increase though in a standard sequential waterfall plot. The third data set we're going to look at shows median incomes for individuals of various ages 15 to 24, 25 to 34, all the way up to 65 and older for various years beginning in 1967. These median incomes form a two-way table that can be well displayed by a three-dimensional waterfall plot. To create the plot, I'll go to the top menu to Plot, Waterfall Plots, Three-Dimensional. The first thing the program needs to know is how the data have been entered into the data sheet. Are the data to be plotted in multiple columns, that's how they are here, or have I entered them using a single column with all the data and then code columns to specify the row and column categories. In the case of multiple columns, it will ask me what columns contain the data and what column contains an indication of the row category. I'll then have several options for my waterfall plot. If I like, I can use multiple fill types that will plot the data using multiple colors. I can draw panes parallel to the y-axis rather than the x-axis. And if I want to, I can also switch rows and columns. Here you see the standard waterfall plot that was created. Each of these planes shows the distribution of the median income over the age categories. There's a plane for each year in the data set. If I like, I can push the right mouse button, go to analysis options, and ask it to switch the rows and columns. In that case, what we'll have is we'll have a plane for each age category, and I'll slant them to make them look a little nicer, and the distribution of median income represents changes across the years.